kitchens maybe uh, maybe on screen we put up a picture which may not which may or may not qualify to be a kitchen but the whole idea is to show that that is where we some wood fire uh, set up in a makeshift then you making kitchens and if you go to some conventional shops, uh, places this kind of a food is prepared even. then we would like to see what are the reasons that the topic today we are talking about redesigning and re-engineering and for this topic i have kept in mind maybe standalone restaurant kitchen that is the focus Thing very large because this is where concerns are being raised so let us see how we go about and what are the reasons which call for redesigning and re -engineering. We have seen how kitchens previous slide and then whenever there has been a change in a fuel the kitchens have been redesigned and re we put up a case called I'd like to tell you <coughs> when the primary fuel has put to oil and from oil to gas and gas to electricity and so on uh, to quote an example the Tata main hospital which is in Jamshed in uh, Jharkhand there are a thousand bedded hospital almost all the times full because it is completely free for employees and former employees and their families of Tata Group. So almost all the thousand beds are occupied and thousand patients, thousand attendants, 400 to 500 other staff. 500 people are fed five meals every day. From the entire equipment comprised of walks which were created on electricity and which were imposed many about 40 years ago. In five years, they have very, very successfully served their purpose. Still, we went and redesigned the entire kitchen. We have done that. And uh, now, since the electricity is no longer the primary fuel there, and we had to install an LPG manifold for a first time, and then we also had to install a uh, gas-fired steam generator there, and so on and so forth. So there is a need to redesign the kitchen, you just don't do it because you want it, number one. Number two reason, there has been a gradual change in the cooking medium. Historically, we used to have animal fat for, temp for weather conditions and uh, regional climates and so on and so forth. From animal fat, when we shifted to fat, now we use uh, refined oils. So their ignition point or the smoking point is much lower than animal fat, which means now there is a increased fire hazard. You need to read it. This is where the fire fighting systems have to be brought in because it, it takes a little longer and at a higher temperature for animal, animal fat to catch fire in comparison to fat. So that has also been one reason why the kitchens had to be redesigned and re-engineered. And then we are also talking about evolving recipes and cooking methods. You know. So many cuisines the world over and there are diversified cuisines. No two cooks will make the same item in a similar manner and no two cuisines will work in this tradition. So whenever there has been introduction of new cuisines or new, recipes, new cooking methods and all that, the kitchen designs had to undergo a change. Without all that, even today if we see the chef is replaced by a new chef. The incoming chef will straight away tell you that he wants to re-align the equipment or he will start dictating that he doesn't want certain equipment and he wants certain introductions and so on and so forth. So that could be one reason. Then we have also found the governments are becoming sensitive, especially on environmental grounds. Like for example, we said now it is mandatory to have an organic waste composter for kitchens generating certain quantum of food or whatsoever. Like that, then we are also talking about a statutory condition, so building bylaws being brought in, especially we are talking about National Building Code 2016 that has played a very, very good role. You cannot have a kitchen in a basement, your kitchen will have to have a ground floor access and your kitchen will have to have an emergency egress and you need to have a safe passage to reach to the safe assembly point and so on and so forth. So, Wherever building bylaws also undergo a change and designs need to be revised and re-engineered. And now today's topic we're talking about, there is an imminent need of redesigning and re-engineering kitchens in view of COVID-19. 
Now, I don't want to get into COVID-19 and what is it and how things like that because I'm sure everybody is now an expert in COVID-19. But we'll only look from our perspective. Good news about coronavirus is it is not football, it is football, it is not airborne. Which means our industry, the business operators industry, is not a culprit, but we are only a victim. But coronavirus, though it doesn't spread through food, it has impacted kitchens. What is the greatest impact of COVID-19? Can anybody say? What is the greatest impact of coronavirus or COVID-19 on our industry in the food business operators? No? You mean, yeah. Anybody? You may use the chat box, please. Yeah. Yes, I am. I, they said somebody said impact on trust. Somebody said business at standstill. Somebody said social distancing. Somebody said distortion of supply chain. Somebody said awareness of hygiene. All are absolutely valid points. All are absolutely valid points. But then I would like to see this is the greatest impact. Our business is shut down completely. Our business is shut down. In a colloquial expression, we say, all food business establishments are completely shut down. That is the greatest impact COVID has on our industry. This is where we are looking at it. So now we are at a standstill. We need to keep moving ahead. We need to understand how do we move ahead and what is that we need to do to our kitchens. Today we will restrict to understand what is required to be done to our kitchens and what we can do and how do we go about. Other than shutting down our business, the collateral damage of COVID-19 is loss, loss of profits, loss of livelihoods, loss of lives, anxiety, stress and depression, uncertain present and an unpredictable future. Almost all of us are going through, if not all of them, at least some of these parameters are affected. So by and large, our industry is affected directly as with the collateral damage. But then we also have a timely advice on the 12th of May 2020. Then we had the Prime Minister addressing the nation. He made a statement saying that we have to turn the crisis into an opportunity. I personally feel the crisis that we are going through is also an opportunity for us to rise out of dust. Now, what we see in the current scenario, owing to various reasons, many kitchens have not upgraded with the times. They have stayed where they are. In between, there, there are may, maybe a typical standalone restaurant, if they stay, if, if they open, maybe four or five years later, if not four or five years, at least six years later, they might go in for a major refurbishment in their interior design, but they do only have minimum changes into their kitchen design and not much has happened in the kitchen front except replacing some worn out equipment and removing some damaged piece of equipment, putting something else and things like that. Functionally demanding things have been done in the kitchens, but a holistic approach has not been taken to the kitchen by and large in the standalone restaurant industry. In this background, if we were to inspect these kitchens, many of them will fail not only in compliance of statutory norms, but also on food safety and hygiene. So let us take this as a right time and let us become our, let us make our kitchens COVID proof and let us make our business future ready. There's a traditional wisdom, it says every year for a month and a half, don't go out into the sea because that is a time where the aqua life is regenerating in itself. So there is a ban on fishing for a certain season. So what they typically do is they go on repairing their nets. Let us consider this as our time where we need to repair our kitchens and get back. So where shall we start? What should be done? And can you start giving your inputs on what is the biggest redesign or re-engineering or a major step that we need to take in our kitchens? Can we get some responses please? I'm um, 
Hygiene will go up. Three arrangements, kitchen automation, getting a share, start at receiving more hygiene. We need to have vegetable washers, deboxing rooms, sterilizing availability of space distance between chef. Yes, fantastic. This is uh, this is the line in which all our kitchens we need to go about. And these answers coming from the industry. Manufacturer of air curtains. Gentlemen, fine, fine. But I asked a question, what do we need to do? Automatic cooking, no hand touch, more ventilation, fantastic. But then these are the responses which are coming from industry. I find most of the people directly involved in the industry and these responses are very, very good. But then consultants like us, when we go and talk to our clients, and tell them what needs to be done. Every point that we have received now is valid. But if we go and tell our clients, our clients will come back to the consultants and say, because they have restaurant for a few years, they'll come back and start giving their own wisdom that they gain based on experience. And they will start telling from their perspective what needs to be done. And they lagta hai. There is no basis of what they are talking about. I'm not saying all of them, but many of them. They say, Mujhe lagta hai. They'll, I feel that we need to do this. I feel that we need to do this, but they're not sure whether that needs to be done or if that needs to be done, why that needs to be done. So what we do now is we go away from this Mujhe lagta hai kind of a concept and we try to understand what we need to do. For the present, the knowledge gain is not sufficient. This is a time where we need to unlearn whatever we have learned because our kitchen operations are going to be in a completely different way altogether. So we need to depend on the guidelines which are being constantly issued by FHRAI, World Health Organization, Ministry of Health, FSSAI. Please check with your for implementing these changes. And if you do not, either get a consultant or go back to the authorities and start telling what you do. Please traditional wisdom gained over long years of experience for a minute. It is not bad, but it may not be accurate. That is the whole idea. Now, the norms for redesigning and re-engineering based on certain facts. As of now, the treatment for COVID-19 is based on social distancing and sanitization. There is no vaccine for coronavirus. So to prevent getting affected virus and if we get affected we need to kill that virus immediately so social distancing is to prevent getting affected and sanitization is to destroy that immediately this is an unprecedented situation so we need to see what needs to do first thing we keep ourselves updated from whatever is happening around now let's see in the foregoing slides we'll discuss the impositions brought in by the current situation, what it means for the commercial kitchens. Now, that we are going to discuss now, as on today, that is on the 19th of May, not all of them are mandatory, but almost will become mandatory in the next few weeks. The guidelines are being continuously evolved by various agencies as and the governments will start issuing these notifications in the coming few weeks. Now, the reality is coronavirus serve, survives on different surfaces from one to three days. So what is action we need to take? We need to create a quarantine store or we call it a quarantine area, if not a quarantine store for keeping all incoming non-materials for at least 24 hours before that material inside. This we're talking about non-perishables. Coronavirus survives between one and three days. Those who can afford to make your purchase and receiving policy change that you receive your goods only once in three days can have this quarantine store for three days. Means the goods that you receive, you quarantine them for three days so that maximum surviving time of coronavirus and maximum surfaces, it will auto destroy itself and then it will become very safe to shift the material inside. Where the space constraints are there, logistics of operations do not need to create a quarantine store or a quarantine area which can take at least for one full day. Just there before you shift it inside. 
that is one incoming material should be quarantined if it is dry or sanitized if it is wet and perishable so you need to provide a veggie washer now veggie washer can be a batch it can be a continuous processor or if you don't want to install a veggie washer at least install a two sink washing unit there and see that you will wash with 50 ppm chlorine and then shift your material inside now for those who are getting this every day after this step you can take them directly into your preparatory area and get in and for those who are receiving for more than one day supply you can shift into your chiller units or a walk-in walk freezers or walk-in chillers or refrigeration units or whatsoever so if you do not have the storage units whether uh, chillers or walk-ins and all that it is time that you start investing into these facilities because this will help you overcome a lot of difficulties in the times to come then the reality is human beings are potential carriers of the virus they must be screened upon arrival it's going to become mandatory now every employee who enters the premises to be thermally screened for their body temperature and this with this will need to be non contact because you cannot afford to put one person only to check the body temperature of every who is coming and leaving the premises while you are at it even the attendance registering mechanisms will now need to become non contact you cannot have a fingerprint machine anymore you cannot have uh, maybe a biometric scanner anymore idea is to go away from human touch as much as possible so install a door mounted thermal body scanner this will scan your body temperature as you approach the door and then you also install a face recognition based attendance monitoring system so one doesn't need to come and give their attendance in any form whether it is a face a retina or whatever or a swipe card or a smart card or whatever those things are gone you install a face recognition technology and you connect both of them the body temperature that is your thermal screening apparatus as well as the face recognition apparatus both of them will be connected char at the back office especially there will be a provision for giving you an alert if somebody's body temperature is not at acceptable level office can immediately stop such person and take appropriate measures of either referring to a medical health or returning away from the premises as well and so forth so the idea is at the back office at the service entry at your employee gate call it this is time that you start you start invest mechanisms there is a capex involved but then it will take away the requirement of a round the clock manpower to monitor these two you don't need a person to take pressure which is going to become mandatory we'll find now then the next reality is touch points must be minimized for cutting down on the transmission risk certain changes that we need to do on our hardware remove handles and door no one should touch a door handle fix a kick plate because you will only by a foot after wearing your shoes not by naked feet and then because there will be no handle which means the door cannot be pulled it can only be pushed so to make it operate on both sides it has to be a double swing this is a very minor change remove door closers and fix spring loaded hinges door closers are again metal components on which corona virus survives for a certain period of time idea is make them go away it is possible to make your door shutters have spring load you can adjust the tension you can adjust the speed you need to properly select and then enlarge the vision panels on your door shutter so that you will see who's on and you can avoid potential accidents and please create separate in and outdoors especially when the in between the restaurant and kitchen because an affected person and a non affected person walking in the same door vestibule is not healthy at all so we are looking at if you look at the is a spring loaded hinge they are available very freely they are available so top left you will find a conventional hinge you remove a convention install a spring loaded hinge so that will you don't need to manually close the door once you move away the door will automatically close by itself and the lower left it shows two doors next to each other that is in and out that is no longer accepted you will need to move away 
indoor and outdoor must be separated and the door closer the exposed door closer is what we are saying you need hardware these are primarily carpentry related works these are relatively easy and this we are talking from a point of view of an employee entry into a standalone restaurant the reality is the staff will have a uniform and now a face mask cover and hand gloves are an integral part of a kitchen worker uniform over and above what other components of uniform they have so you require a storage and collection cupboard and if you are using a disposable type then you provide for a drop box also now these are pull out storage boxes for your ppe equipment or your gloves and face masks and head gears or whatever and see that and this i would suggest you install it multiple locations one directly at the service entry second even somewhere in the kitchen while working if somebody needs a replacement let them not go back all the service entry let them pick up a replacement right somewhere in the kitchen see that these are the appropriate easily accessible location but away from heat and fire within the kitchen this is also very easily done job you just need to procure these are readily available and you need to put Reality is, kitchen workers need to wash their hands every hour for 20 seconds using soap and water. Today, nobody is saying every hour. They are only using the word saying that as frequently as possible, but not longer than once in four hours. This is the today's recommendation. But I would find the food handlers will need to make it more often. So let us plan for every hour. But the cycle is that washing hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. followed by a 70% alcohol based sanitizer so what we need to do is review the kitchen layout thoroughly wherever possible means without doors allowing for segregation and free movement provide a hand wash sink in each section of kitchen and then what is also possible make washing your hands a celebration let it not become a punishment i have known A, a place where they have already started a practice. Every hour in the kitchen, there is a bell ringing, and everybody will suspend their work and go and wash. So it can become a very pleasant experience. It does not need to become a punishment to anybody. And because hand wash will need to be followed by a hand sanitization, make sure the sanitizers are kept away from this or hot surfaces because these are. alcohol based they are 70% alcohol based so they are highly highly inflammable so safety a priority then there is also a norm coming saying that your kitchen needs to be segregated into at least three different zones range cooking areas non range critical cooking areas and the preparation areas these are in addition to dish wash pot wash and chef's cabin and so on and so forth we are talking about the primary kitchen operations will need to be segregated into three different areas and then while one school of thought is saying food physical barriers between the sections but this needs to be debated much much seriously because putting physical barriers might lead to obstructing emergency egress so we need to find a way of redoing the entire kitchen layout create compartmentation without barriers so that people are segregated functions are segregated activities are segregated but in case of an emergency everybody can still egress the kitchen without making a chaotic situation so that's what we say now this is i found this picture somewhere this is working into independent sections so now you have different sections they are all segregated there is a free flow there is a free flow movement of people also there but the cooking areas is segregated and so on and don't look into the critical layout this only to get an idea that you can make it to compartments without physical barriers then social distancing here to stay for a long time pretty long time the fssai norms are saying not more than two people should be worked working in a 10 feet long area in a kitchen now today for a stand alone restaurant kitchen and then they also say in the kitchen working it should be done in such a way that the worker should not be facing each other so that one person sneezing or a cough droplets accidentally should not enter into the other person system that is the whole idea so worker should not face each other worker should be spaced apart and one norm says not more than two people in a 10 running feet length area 
there is other norms which are saying more or less similar so the action that is required is that we need to realign cooking equipment let us see this kind of a linear cooking arrangement is no longer valid we cannot take this kind of a linear the simplest way is that between every two rails please insert a table that can become a support table or a work table for that particular section so the section will become longer take a typical size of a 4 feet range or a 5 feet range and put another 3 feet or a 2 feet or a 2 and a half feet work table so each person gets a space of 2 and a half to 3 meters by default so but this kind of an arrangement where we say cooking equipment cooking equipment can be there but people cannot be there so the easier way is wherever possible please insert non cooking segregators in between cooking equipment so that people will be spaced out there's an island cooking station that we're talking about which are no longer active. so people cannot face each other if at all you still because if the design is already there and you have an island cooking station and today you don't want to do that at least in the central part put a vertical partition but put a vertical partition in such a way that one person's discharge will not go on to the other side but at the same time it will not adversely impact the kitchen ventilation system also which might already be there so we need to review that carefully idea is to see the the reason why say workers not to face each other is to prevent that the droplets coming out of the person should not cross over to the other person so long as we take care of that we can do some reengineering create maybe a barrier or have a transparent glass and so on and so forth things like that can be taken care then the reality is now we said the kitchen workers new uniform we are talking about a headgear which has always been there but two new additions we are talking about one mask and one pair of gloves these are going to generate a lot lot of sweat and sweat is harmful to food so you need to review the kitchen ventilation scheme to improve the indoor air quality probably you need to have more of fresh air and uh, balancing has to be reviewed very critically and now we also need to have a minimum humidity of 40% in the in the kitchen so wherever we have a kitchen fresh air systems not on evaporative air cooling or not on controlled humidity or not or it is just an outside air which is sent inside filters you know we need to incorporate humidifiers to bring the humidity levels into the kitchen of a minimum 40% this is a big job then we talking about there is another norm which say restaurant in the restaurant after dining there should be a segregation of manpower the waiter who serving cannot do the clearance because we know the waiter is clean the waiter is healthy the waiter is safe but then there must be some corona virus deposited on the service where by the customer or by the guest so it should not be cleared by the same waiter norms will be issued very soon that there should be a dedicated person to do and this dedicated person will have to wear a complete ppe personal protection equipment he look like a warrior from a battlefield and he will do that but then the idea is once we do this till now it directly goes into a washing area dishwash area and deposited in the soil dish landing area and then it will go now we need to make one additional incorporation even before the cleared service where goes into a dishwash it needs to go into a sanitary sink this is a norm this is what we normally follow sanitize rinse and wash now we will have an additional requirement even before our clearance goes here it will have to go into a deposit bin where items need to be sanitized and then they'll come into a dishwash line mechanical you may have a hook type dishwasher you may have a conveyor type dishwasher whatever but before they come into the dishwashing you need to have a sanitization bin then the reality is that self service buffets are not going to be allowed you can be sure about it of a guest standing at a long buffet counter and picking up and serving himself and helping himself will be gone by and large what will happen is that all your buffets will have to have glass sneeze guards which will prevent access to the food by the guest they will need to be assisted buffets you will need to have dedicated service staff who will serve 
a guest will not be allowed to handle the ladles or the spoons or to serve themselves. So, and then the norm will also be, now your future buffets are going to look like this. You select an item what you want and you tell a waiter and what is going to be a mini portions, other plates or platters or bowls or whatsoever, they're going to be served and they will be brought to your table. The days of standing near a buffet and helping yourself onto your plate are going to be history, at least for some time. A substantial time that is at either at least until when you find a cure or a vaccine to the coronavirus, this is going to be an issue of past. So the idea is that you have so many items that needs to be served. The future is going to be wherever possible, number of items will be served in disposable containers. And these disposable containers need to be sanitized before their use. So for sanitizing them, what is being recommended is a UVC cabinet, ultraviolet C. There are three grades in ultraviolet, A, B, C. C is allowed for sanitizing these disposable containers or this can sanitize even your plates and spoons and crockery and cutlery and so on and so forth. The idea is to see that even the disposable containers that you receive, they need to be properly sanitized before you use them. And once they use them, they are disposed of anyway. And what needs to go into the dishwash, they'll go through the entire dishwash cycle. And before they are reused, they need to be sanitized in this kind of a cabinet or a chamber or apparatus or whatever you want to call it. Then paper KOTs, if still somebody the paper KOTs, they need to go out completely. There will be no paper. Because, because of multiple reasons, one, touch, contact through paper is removed, number one. Number two, one trick of your way to come into the kitchen to hand over the KOT to a barker is also eliminated. If, for the reasons of efficiency, most of the restaurants have already done away with the paper KOT, but still if some people are following it, this is a time, this practice and move on to a digital KOT transmission system. There are many, many models and varieties and things like that available. I'll also say what is likely to happen in future, though it is not directly related to kitchen. There'll be no printed menu cards or menu books in any restaurants anymore. Right at your entrance foyer of a restaurant, you will have a QR code. When an incoming guest scans the QR code on your smartphone, that day's menu will be transmitted onto their phone. And if they are using a smartphone, the position to order using their own phone. Order will be directly transmitted into the kitchen. And there are systems which will be coming very soon for the kitchen to identify even among the customers who has ordered where. This will be linked up to a GPS so that the kitchen will also know this order is coming from so-and-so table number. We are talking about that level of automation coming up, but to make the first move, those people who are still following the paper KOT system can plan to discontinue this paper KOT system completely. Then we are talking about the kitchens require deep cleaning. Till now we wash them, we spray them, we sanitize them, whatever it is. That Now the time has come, we need to do deep cleaning. Scientifically, for a kitchen deep cleaning, you need steam at 125 degrees, 9 bar pressure. So this calls for a major overall of your entire plumbing system. By hose reels, install, we need to have a steam generator, we need to have uh, steam rated pipelines from the generator all the way till your uh, pressure system. And then also see that our drain channels are reinforced or strengthened, whether they will, or our wall surfaces in somewhere, there is a lot of space between the tile flaring and the wall. At that pressure, the tiles will start falling off. If there is no tiling, if it is just given a synthetic enamel paint, then at that temperature and that pressure, the paint will start peeling off. So it is time that we need to start looking at our entire surfaces, which require deep cleaning. And even the floors will need to be germ-free and they need to be smooth. So wrong but a deep cleaning here, you are using 125 degrees of temperature at 9 bar pressure. It is not very, very safe 
for a human activity, but then this is a requirement which is going to be there. So let's get ready for that. Then have you are looking at jointless flooring. This is going to be the norm tomorrow. We might need to go in for VDF floor. We need to go in for in situ flooring there, which will, if not completely eliminate the joints, we're talking about in the floor to prevent microbial deposits there. And then this picture, uh, bottom right, I'm just shown the large size of the wall tiles. That's all. Please look at that. The number of joints are very, very minimum. I think in this entire area, I see only one, two, three, four, five. Uh, four joints for five tile surfaces. So start moving towards minimizing the joints which are breeding factories for harmful microorganisms, whether virus or bacteria. Then the reality is, as per National Building Code 2016, the reality is any commercial kitchen exceeding 50 square meters in area, that is 500 square feet, must have a fire protection system installed. So the fire protection system primarily will comprise of three parts, kitchen specific. One is the hood based kitchen fire suppression system. The second is a sprinkler system, which is connected to the main sprinkler mechanism of the entire building. Third is portable fire extinguishers, which are selected based on the kind of a fire, the kind of a hazard. Here I've shown a collection of cylinders just to see that there are many kinds of portable fire extinguishers, but we need to select based on the requirement. These three are going to be very, very essential. And luckily, luckily, the kitchen hood based fire suppression system can be retrofitted. Whereas for a sprinkler system, you need to check with your building whether the building itself has got a sprinkler system. If so, you take an extension not there then how do you work out installing a sprinkler system into the kitchen that calls for a major study portable fire extinguishers are available everywhere you can just pick up and based on the kind of fire hazard that you will install they have to be mounted on the floor the space below them has to be kept free and then you have to mark there saying that this is a position for a portable fire extinguisher so that nobody will keep a busing trolley or some other equipment or some other apparatus there and so on and so forth they're easily accessible and at all they need to be calibrated well and proper. So this, uh, I think we will stop here. If we keep going, there will be a lot of changes that we need to keep doing. By and large, what we look at, if we just uh, take a quick look at what we have discussed so far, the and re-engineering is involving works of carpentry, water supply, drainage system, system, extremely low voltage systems, smart technologies, digital technologies, and a simple realignment of equipment from here to there and so on and so forth. And air conditioning system also needs to be done. So it is much more than what we simply think. If, if all that we need to do is to, uh, is to maintain social distancing, just shifting a few pieces of equipment here and there is not going to serve the purpose. By and large, whatever we discussed need to be implemented not by choice, at least by compulsion. But then the question is, why so much is required? <coughs> Sorry. Why so much is required? If you look at there are two straight answers. One, the food safety has shifted from bacteriology to viral. Earlier, we, we knew what could happen. We had very limited instances, salmonella poisoning, we had botulism and so on. Nothing, nothing more. All, all waterborne diseases which can happen anywhere will in the kitchen, but there was nothing very specific in the kitchen. But now from bacteria, it has shifted into virus. We have one virus today which has no treatment, no cure, no medicine, no, no vaccine. So we need to fight this in preventing and how to go about. Luckily, this virus is unstable at certain conditions, that is the sanitization and all that. So we need to practice social distancing and sanitization to keep this virus away. The second reason is work comfort and human life safety are now being given its prominence. Till a few years ago, kitchens were dungeons and nobody, nobody really bothered except those who are in the very, very new, new entrants. I know they felt the setting of a kitchen was just a child's play and went on and so on and so forth. But that no longer is acceptable. 
because of these two reasons your kitchens need to become as scientific as possible then there are a lot of other things that we can do like replacement of conventional taps again to reduce the human touch we can go with a sensor based taps and faucets use hand touch then we install knee operated and pedal operated faucets and taps on equipment wherever it is possible then we are talking about enhancement of illumination if kitchens do not have adequate light we do that lighting properly now we give at least about 250 luminous lux level on all the cooking surfaces and 150 to 200 on all the non cooking surfaces then we bring in miscellaneous tools like chopping board sterilizers knife sterilizers and then one major feature live streaming of kitchens for boosting customer satisfaction now this is not exactly a kitchen related redesign point but that all somebody wants to do that because the people who come to our restaurant or kitchen or our bakery are going to be extremely paranoid about their safety the one strong point that we can recreate their safety is by showing them how we work in our kitchen so i have a live video streaming if you want to do that do that right now and then there are a lot of other things that we need to do we can do now since live streaming is also going to be done then you see that your wall surfaces in the kitchen are a designer element you you incorporate tile mosaics and you have designed you have artworks you you can do anything and see that everything is aesthetically attractive functionally clear yes whatever we discuss now they are from a functional point of view but since the kitchens will also be seen by the customers now make them as aesthetically attractive as possible so innovation and improvement have no end then finally if we do all this or at least some of them what before we reopen our kitchens flush out the entire stagnant water flush out all the drain lines because the stagnant water will be a ready ground for bacteria so we need to flush out because our kitchens are shut down for almost about 70 days now and we don't know when we'll be reopening them if it can be a few weeks to a few months so just before we reopen please flush out the entire stagnant water and see that all the drain lines are flush we don't want a choked drain line on the second day of a kitchen reopening and we are doing a live streaming to our customer then check electrical supply some fires might have gone bad some kitchens which are closed abruptly might have become breeding grounds for rats and other vermin and they might have damaged the electric and so on and so forth see that electrical supply earthing and lights are properly restored to their uh, required condition then do a complete dry run of kitchen ventilation system because a lot of dust and suspended particulate matter might have settled into the ducts and hoods you need to get rid of all of that have a dry run of the entire kitchen ventilation system then disinfect all the refrigeration equipment because once they are air tight in the air tight compartment we don't know unwanted uh, growth might have taken place some microorganism some fungus or whatever might have grown there so please reopen the entire refrigeration equipment wash them disinfect them sanitize them keep them open for a day and then close and then have a dry run at least for 24 hours not less than 24 hours in any case then check the lpg manifold and pipeline then deep cleaning of all surfaces and most importantly give a thorough orientation and a training to and these steps you are talking about before reopening of your kitchen before reopening of the kitchens which are shut down but then what happens is when we go and tell our clients you need to do all these steps quite a few our clients come and say you don't worry apna setting hai they say i am not going to do all these things even if they become compulsory because And so we know so and so. Yes, they say it's not a laughing matter. But then we consultants keep coming across so many times. You know, there are smart clients who will pit a customer. Uh, uh, there are smart clients who will pit a consultant against a vendor. A vendor carries a conventional wisdom. A consultant carries a different kind of a knowledge, and they they want to have a football match between both of them, and so on and so forth. But the days of clients claiming. apna setting hai or please do remember those days are over because the client may have a setting with the government or some other agencies and so on and so forth but coronavirus has no setting with it 
I'm showing pictures of some of the people. He is the Prime Minister of Britain, Boris Johnson, been affected with coronavirus positive. And then we're talking about the uh, Princess of Spain. She died with coronavirus. Then we're talking about people like Tom Hanks and his wife who are affected with coronavirus. And lower left, you look at these are mass burial grounds for victims of coronavirus. And you will see in different parts of the world, different all over the world, this is happening. So please do realize epidemics, pandemics, disasters, they do not have setting with anyone. They will affect everyone, irrespective of race, place, location, what all that we need is one positive case in our food business to see that we are permanently shut down. So let us not take a change. Let us do whatever is required to be done. We need to keep moving ahead. And then one interesting fact, this is the last slide that I'll say. There's nothing more after this except taking some questions. What are we looking at in future? To help reducing touch points, is the chef cabin giving way to an open work desk? We don't want to have a cabin. Cabin means again, you have partitions, you have surfaces that need more cleaning, that need more sanitization. The chef cabin will have a door because inside the cabin he needs silence where the kitchen noise is not tolerable inside a chef cabin. So either we remove the chef cabin and make him to work in an open desk in a kitchen. If the kitchen ambience is taken care, there is a humidity temperature or move the chef outside completely. Chef cannot sit in the kitchen and work anymore. Are we looking at that kind of a scenario or next room service ought to take this cabin to go out of the kitchen, there's no choice. Frequency of food handlers, health check increasing. Earlier we had something like once in six months, once in a year, food handlers, health check were mandatory based on state to state. Some state made once in six months, some state said once in a year, one state said once in a quarter. But now every employee's body temperature has to be screened every day on arrival and departure. So we are talking about a frequency of the food handlers, health checks changing. Then more and more conditions will come there, not only the body check and probably they might say every week you may have to do a throat swab or you, you may have to do a nasal swab or so on and so forth. Or they might say every, every employee must have a health record and you need to have a doctor coming every 15 days and so on and so forth. This is a future that we are looking at. And then jointless flooring we are looking at. Then we are also looking at a stainless steel wall cladding becoming a norm in the times to come. And those who can afford and those who want to be safe can think of copper tops because copper has a nanoparticle feature. So by it comes antimicrobial. So it is a lot safe than any other material like stainless steel that we're using now. But then the price variation stainless steel to copper I think is one is to three. So you the entire equipment, at least the worktops can be looked at copper in the times to come. And the biggest worry is whether the art of cooking will go away and it will now be restricted to science of cooking. Because now so many conditions imposed by FSSAI, World Health Organization, Ministry of Health and so on and so forth. These are all conditions brought in because of scientific reasons. So cooking is going to be bear as a science and it is no longer going to be an art. This is the biggest change that we need to mentally accept. But then we need to understand even if it's the direction of wind, we can adjust our sail. Every crisis has a shelf life. So we are definitely looking at brighter days ahead and let us write away the whole story of human doom. Ladies and gentlemen, with that I say a thank you. So, Thank you, sir, uh, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, I recognize you. This is Rahul Salwar, right? That's right, sir. Fantastic. I know your voice. Good. I couldn't see you, but I know your voice. Great. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, so there are a few questions that I've made note of, uh, and I would be putting them forward to you. And okay. uh, you can answer them. Uh, that would make it more easy for all the participants. Uh, they've put Fantastic. in these questions. Can we, take one, can we take one by one, or you want me to write down all the questions again? No, no, we're going to be taking it one by one. I'll be throwing the question one by one and uh, you can answer. Uh, I'll answer whatever I can and I, I will write down whatever I can't and we'll revert with the answers. Sure, sir. Right. 
that so uh, this is a I question by uh, you want to are you ready sir i'm ready oh great okay so uh, there's a question uh, by mr gautam dandekar and uh, the question is about uh, please tell us the future role of combi ovens in indian commercial kitchen uh, how are they beneficial and uh, how to make the best use of combi ovens and their energy saving potential fantastic no it's a great question a combi oven will do or will play the role of many other kinds of equipment in the kitchen we see more and more bakeries and we see more and more even mithai places using combi ovens are turning out not only the conventional star hotel kitchens and so on and so forth especially in uh, in the city of chennai itself we go to a couple of great south indian restaurant chains they have installed combi ovens as early as about a decade ago to even bring out traditional south indian food so one yes there is a tremendous role for a combi oven number one so please start looking at installing number two but they will serve the purpose only provided you know how to operate so please do not continue to depend on your employee skilled chef or a cook or an operator for that but start learning yourself learning to operate is no rocket technology a good vendor will give you a good orientation of and initial kick off of a training a good vendor will give you that you need to have passion even if there is no passion, compulsion because even before we started this conversation mr asked the question that somebody raised a, an apprehension about the migrant labor coming back now let us look at a pessimistic scenario if your cook doesn't come back from wherever he has gone what do you do you want to shut down your business so you need to do it yourself unlike using a conventional cooking equipment which calls for a lot more skill the combi ovens are a lot more easy to operate so please start learning that is second point third point energy saving <coughs> if you look at the overall energy consumed by a combi oven is definitely less than the overall energy consumed by the other conventional equipment used to bring out the same output there are certain apprehensions people will feel that if i if i use a 12 tray combi oven or a 20 and the energy required is anywhere between 12 kilowatt to 20 kilowatt or 30 kilowatts or so on and so forth you multiply that with per kilowatt energy charge and say no 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 this is going to be very very high but then that is not the way to look at that you need to look at a total calculation a comparable cost with the conventional cooking methods and a combi oven cooking methods for the equivalent output not the equivalent time if you look at the equivalent output combi ovens becomes a lot more energy saving so you can go ahead so uh, the next question uh, would be how to make sure that staff or employees use masks and gloves uh, more efficiently and regularly carrot and carrot and stick first you need to you need to sensitize them orient them you need to teach them you need to provide the sanitizer you need to provide the gloves and you need to provide and you need to encourage them to use them like previously i said hand washing can become a celebration you know you you ring a bell or you gong a bell in a kitchen every hourly or every two hourly every where it is by default an indication that everybody will they are doing and they will quickly go to the hand washing and wash and come back likewise you also inculcate it into them it doesn't need to be enforced they need to understand the role and importance of your personal protection equipment i will call a pair of hand gloves a head gear also a part of the personal protection equipment once they understand it is for your own safety and also once they and without these there is a very high risk of putting your own on a chopping block then it will become easy and then there can always be some appreciation okay you start appreciating proactively where and maybe the hr can also start taking action and issue reminders and orientations and things like that for people who forget initial few days or few weeks they will forget to put on their mask they will forget to arrive with their headgear they will forget to arrive with their hand gloves encourage them correct them over a period of time it will become a habit by itself there will be very few people who will be stubbornly reluctant to refuse 
Thank you so much for that answer. So the next question would be, uh, does using sir every hour affect the skin? This question is by Mr. Satish. If you use a, see there are, if you use a sanitizer which has got more than 70% alcohol content and using a sanitizer follows your hand wash, then it will not affect your Please go in for certified sanitizers. Now, I think in the last seven years, India must have seen not less than 500 manufacturers and vendors of sanitizer liquids. Please insist on a proper certification and then use them. There is nothing going to happen to your skin. Uh, next is a very interesting question, and uh, this is regarding small business operators, small uh, small uh, small uh, food business operators. And the idea, is, the question is that the ideas discussed are possible in large size kitchens or large scale organizations. What are practical options for smaller restaurants where kitchens are uh, in the range of 200 to 400 square feet of size? Question by Mr. Karthik. Okay, I'll answer this question in two parts. Okay. Part one is related to restaurant. If you have a 200 square foot kitchen or if you're a 400 square foot kitchen, then your output is also limited proportionately. Then you might be doing a few thousand, maybe 20,000, 30,000 kind of a business in your dining place and your focus will be more on a takeaway. So the future is going to belong a business metric mix. 70% is a takeaway in dining and only 30% is a dine in. Number one. So that is as far as the restaurant is concerned. But coming back into the kitchen, if somebody really want to make a mark and survive with industry in the long term, the days of running your business on square feet kitchen are gone. Please realize that. If you have already been in the business for quite some time and if you have made some savings, please reinvest that savings in having a decent kitchen. Otherwise, look for some other business. It's a very rude answer. I know I am being rude, but then there's a reality. We need to accept. I cannot operate my kitchen from an outhouse or from a garage or from a shopping area or from uh, annexy to some place or just some covered shed year after. It might be possible for some time in the short term till somebody wakes up on fine day and says, sorry, you cannot run this kind of a kitchen. The day a customer wants to come and see your kitchen, you are doomed. The day a government official comes and says you are violating one, two, three, four, five norms and your kitchen is to be sealed, you are doomed. I am not questioning the ability of turning out food product from this kitchen, but I am commenting on the desirability of having such. Did I make myself clear in this? Yes, sir. My apologies for being rude, but that's a practical. Uh, the next question would be, uh, can we use ozonized water to clean the kitchen area in lieu of steam or hot water? Is it effective uh, and uh, it can save energy? And uh, can ozonized water be recycled? All water can be recycled, including ozonized water. Ozonized water for cleaning the kitchen, but it is not sufficient for cleaning of the kitchen. Deep cleaning of the kitchen requires pressure and temperature. If water is still sent into a steam generator and then it still comes out at 125 degrees centigrade at 9 bar pressure, the answer is yes. But ozonized water, soft cleaning is not an equivalent substitute of deep cleaning with steam at 9 bar. Next question would be, uh, how do we ensure restaurant is kept infection free and do we screen our customers as well? Isn't it a sensitive aspect or issue that the customer would actually look at? Fine. Uh, I will take this question pertaining to the restaurant, but any other questions we can do in another session. But I'll briefly say it is now going to be mandatory that every customer or a guest walking into the restaurant must be thermally screened for body temperature, number one. Number two, upon arrival, every customer must be wearing a mask, number two. Number three, they will be allowed to remove their mask only 
seated at a table and they are not allowed to leave their mask on the table they have to fold it and put it in their pocket number 3 so sensitivity issue has gone it's gone out of the window if you are sensitive to all these things please don't come to the restaurant simple then we are talking about how do we sanitize the restaurant all surfaces will need to be sanitized with 70% alcohol based sanitizers at least once in 4 hours all surface so which means now you cannot sanitize a table cloth which means a restaurant will no longer have a table cloth you'll have a hard surface hard surface if uh, depending upon the class of your restaurant depending upon the ambience that you want to give you can have a korean surface you can have an italian marble you can have a marble you can have a granite you can have wood you can have uh, mica you can have decalum whatsoever but it needs to be a hard surface non absorbent surface so the table cloths are gone no longer have a white team cloth service or a formal dining or a celebration service any longer it's gone by extension of that even absorbent or porous materials are also not allowed which means we are talking about italian marble or we are talking about marble even among granite we are talking about near non porous granites only will be allowed so ambience is gone so sensitivity has already become zero and then we are talking about sanitizing the entire surface which means by an extension of that Curtains are gone. Vertical blinds are gone. Venetian blinds are gone. You know, you only have a glass or a wall or a wallpaper. You need to clean, and sanitization has to be done with not less than seventy percent alcohol-based sanitizer using a non-absorbent cloth. This is the norm. Every surface. So ornamentation is going to be minimalistic hereafter in the restaurants. You have a lot of embellishments. You have a lot of artifacts. You have a lot of hanging or as art objects it is time you remove all of them you feel that you are walking into a hospital cafeteria here after that's the reality that we and i hope it's going to be only for a medium term maybe maybe in less than 2 years we should be going back into the normal this might be there until a vaccine is found or a permanent cure is found for corona virus and the people develop herd immunity and people start feeling really confident coming into the restaurants for masti when i say masti i am using a very positive term saying that they are coming there for celebration not for mischief so there are uh, yes sir there are uh, five more questions uh, would you want to take any more or uh, do you want to answer them privately i'm okay if you have time i can take sure sir uh, so one question is very interesting uh again from a designer perspective now does copper uh, is it preferable to use copper worktop to stainless steel uh, by yes. mr dinesh bharadwaj yes yes because we as we said we are moving the we are moving in food safety progressively so we are moving one step further from anti bacterial to anti viral though copper does not give an anti viral it has got an antimicrobial property at least which means the organisms that settle down and survive in copper are far less in comparison to stainless steel so at least the work can afford please go ahead sure sir uh the next question is regarding kitchen ventilation and uh, what is the best way to arrive at exhaust cfm uh, ac ph uh, cfm per square feet and cfm per linear square foot per linear foot i, I will not go into the uh, theory or the calculations of yeah. this and uh, i will leave this to mr anmol prabhu to answer this but by and large i will tell you if you have a common multi cuisine for a stand alone restaurant uh, uh, in peak times in peak times or if you have a banquet hall attached to that or, or whatever in peak times we look at anywhere up to 30 acph otherwise in lean times we look at 20 acph so an adjustment between 20 and 30 acph should be sufficient you don't need more than that and you can't work with less than that but always maintain a negative pressure in the kitchen so that the front air is not coming into the uh, sorry uh, aromas are not getting into the restaurant sure sir uh, the other questions again, that you asked are beyond my domain and they need uh, a proper technical sound footing into that which i don't think. so that's why i left this question to mr anmol prabhu and let him take it up sure sir 
Uh, if, if you question, can't reach him, I can reach him. No issues. No, I, I can I can reach him as well. Uh, not a problem, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, the next question is again from a design perspective. Are antimicrobial levers advisable to be replaced with existing levers in the commercial faucets? This question is by Mr. Nathan Patel. Yes. And uh, how do we implement table service at food facilities other than restaurants? Here we're talking about the industrial and education uh, segments where there are very large volumes. Can you elaborate a bit? Uh, so he, yes, sir. Uh, they are talking about uh, implementing table service, the kind of example that you gave uh, uh, for food service facilities uh, in, in, in a place where there's a large footprint, for example, an industrial cafeteria or an educational institution where at any given point of time, you have a lot of uh, uh, people coming in, especially during the break hours. Fine, I got it. Now, what will happen is... Uh, Progressively hereafter, this kind of a large format service will by and large will be repleted and no one will need to go into a buffet or a Bainmari or a pickup counter or, or whatsoever. They simply come and sit and maintaining the appropriate social distance and uh, you have trolleys which will ferry the pre-loaded food trays which will be left at each seat by a dedicated waiter. Likewise, likewise, you will also have a dedicated waiters doing the clearance. Now, hereafter, what will also happen is, let us say if a table has got four covers and four people coming at four different points of time, third person is still dining when the first person is leaving and the tray is cleared and then the fifth person comes and sits there will not happen. A table will need to become fully vacant and then entire table sanitized before the next round of occupation. So the dining time given in these establishments will also need to be enlarged and social distancing needs to be maintained. There is no question of queuing up. For example, if you're talking about, let us say, 500 people queuing up at a Mari main half meter distance between each one. Then the queue will start at the main marine, it will, prob it will probably end at the factory gate, not at the dining hall gate. So that queue will not happen. And then also what will happen is these establishments will have to start releasing their employees for the dining on a time slot basis. For example, all employees and let us say an industrial factory, we're talking about all, all people on the shop floor four. Maybe they will be given a slot between 12.40 to 1.10. And maybe everybody in the accounts and administration department might be given a slot from 1.20 to 1.50 or whatsoever. So they have to very meticulously for slots to avoid crowding. Crowding and san social distance and sanitization are the two keywords. Everything will work around them hereafter. And hopefully these measures, what we will implement, We'll go away in about a couple of years and we'll come back into a late night. I think uh, you that should not, you, should, you should not go into a pickup counter. Your food should come to your table. I think that has answered two or three other questions as well. I mean, uh, your elaboration has helped answer two, three other questions as well. I'll take Thank the you. last two questions. Uh, one is a very simple one. Uh, do you see shared kitchen spaces and cloud kitchens as the future for small players? What is the GOC? Can you repeat the question, please? The first part, I didn't understand. Uh, uh, do you see shared kitchen spaces? And oh, shared kitchen spaces. Yes, sir. Okay. And cloud kitchens as the future for small players? Uh, unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no. You need to have a proper kitchen conforming to all the statutory compliances and in a position confidence among the diner. And once you fulfill these two conditions, you are no longer a small kitchen, you are a proper decent kitchen. So the concept of a small kitchen is gone. 
it can be a compact kitchen but it cannot be a small kitchen. kitchen spaces need to be enlarged but yes as we said now uh, i'll tell you a fact in indonesia food business 80% runs on delivery only 20% runs on dining in india progressively maybe in a couple of years we are looking at the deliveries to go as high as 60 to 70% 40% coming into restaurants from that point of view what is known as a cloud kitchen has got a tremendous potential provided they upgrade their meet these two conditions one is all the safety compliance the second is generate customer confidence so the uh, another question is can we use uvc cabinets for sterilizing food before serving it to the customer why do you need to sterilize food food is not a carrier of this virus food is not a carrier of corona virus only disintegrated decomposed food earlier it, it it had salmonella poisoning and clostridium botulism but then once the food is cooked beyond a certain temperature the corona virus does not so where is the reason for sanitizing the food in a ultraviolet sea chamber it is not required and coming over to the last question for today's session uh, is there an official rule book from the government pertaining to rules to be followed in restaurants seating and kitchen area not yet as i said right in the beginning these are progressive norms which are currently in the form of fssai has issued guidelines world health organization has issued guidelines now what will happen is that uh, the food business operators are governed at a state level each state government will take up at their level and they will come out with their own rule books and you will find notifications coming out progressively in the next few weeks thank you so much sir for a wonderful session if you get one single booklet of all the rules you will not get it so thank you sir once again uh, from uh, synergy exposures uh, my pleasure and, uh, we thank uh, also the sponsors of the event rotate cooperation uh, uh, i lost audio i i, I can't hear anything i lost uh i'll i'll take it over from brijesh uh, here so and uh, uh brijesh is actually wanting to thank the sponsors for the event eurotech corporation mm-hmm. revax systems and washmatic and uh, i i i also thank all the sponsors thank you so much sir <laughs> thank you once again for a wonderful session hope i have been of some value and thanks a lot for listening to me patiently